Okay, so today we're gonna service our uh, 10,000 watt propane generator. It's really no different than changing the oil in a lawnmower or anything else, except it sits right on the ground. But I've I've got a few I've got a few tricks for working on that too. So let's see what we got here. Normally, what I'll do is I'll take this whole this whole uh, section right off so I can get at the front. So it's pretty easy, just a couple bolts. Actually, I think they're screws. They're not even bolts. This thing could use a good clean, and this would be a good place to test your. Uh, oh yeah. Super clean. You could use that super clean in there. It does need to be wiped down, doesn't it? Pretty dirty. Look at it. Ew. Yucky. Then this whole piece right here, you can just pick it right up and move it right out of the way. And that shows you pretty much everything. As you can see, you got your, your batteries, a little V-twin motor, 10,000 watt generator unit. The oil filter's right out here on the sides, so easy to get at. And they give you a oil drain hose which is kind of cool, except like I said, it's right on the ground. So it's very hard to get all the oil out of it. So I, I hedged a plan for that. After doing it three or four times. Those are uh, JIC fittings, they're actually quite snug. They're common on hydraulics and stuff. I don't know why they're on my oil drain hose, but I guess they figure they, they don't want it to leak. So what I've done here is I, I cut the top out of an old oil jug and I took the cap. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna undo this cap that I just loosened you can see what I was talking about, JIC. See how that's pointed? That fitting is actually pointed. Mm -hmm. So we're going to run that in here like that. And that gets it down as low as possible so the oil will come out. Genius. Well, I can only do something the hard way about so many times. And I have a hard time not coming up with a better idea. It seems kind of silly, but uh, there's a big difference in being able to run it through that spout is trying to run it over the run it over the top because mm -hmm. you couldn't get all the oil out of it. Another thing that helps will take this off. Let that breathe. I'm gonna let that oil drain. So you took the oil cap off. Yeah. That way it lets it vent. You can do the same thing back here. You can pull this out part way. And that helps get some of the air in there too. Uh -huh. A yeah. lot of people, they have a suction thing that goes in there and they can pull it right out with suction. I do not have this. All I have is hand tools, so I, right. I do it this way. Someday, maybe. Oh, you never know. Once that gets drained down below the oil filter, I'm going to take that oil filter off. I'm taking this all in you got it okay give me a job after next month you gotta do this next time what, <laughs> what? <laughs> she does not look impressed you don't look impressed why are we not impressed she never looks impressed okay so i'm going to show you this little neat tool here that i've got before i start uh those of, those of you that don't know and you, you know do all your own service work and stuff this is one of the best oil filter wrenches that you can possibly get this particular one's made by snap-on it's got a 3 8 drive on this side and a half inch drive on this side so you can use it with either and you pretty much just put it on over your filter tug it until it's tight when you rotate it it tightens up and it either uh loosens your filter or you know tightens it depending on which way you turn the handle but uh i this actually i believe it's made to uh to turn big sections of pipe but it will turn anything round 
And I'm telling you right now, I've never had an oil filter that I couldn't get off with this thing. I probably shouldn't have said that, but as you never know. So you slide that on there and give it a tighten. And you hold on to the strap. Give it a twist like that. And it tightens up on your filter. Or it's supposed to. There you go. Just like that. Whew. That thing's on there tight. You, you you shouldn't put these on more than like much more than hand tight, but for some reason this one I find it gets tighter as time goes on. I don't know why. It just does. Of course that makes a mess every time. So we have to let all that oil run out. I really try to get as much of the used oil out as I can. I like to take care of our small engines. We've put a lot of money into this one so far. This machine is probably 20 years old. One new cylinder head last year and the generator unit itself was rebuilt last year so it should it should last us should last us quite a bit longer i would think this is my first propane powered engine i'd heard nightmare stories about them at work but it really hasn't been bad we've had to have them come service it and fix it adjust valves and uh, repair stuff a few times but we've been here five years now and the machine's older than the house is so a lot of these people that have you stand by generators like this at home they have a, a cycle programmed into it so once every two weeks it runs for half an hour or whatever to keep the battery charged we don't need to do that because it gets run every few weeks anyway it's not a problem what are we using for a filter use it a napa gold napa gold filter this particular one's a little 7145 i think it's common to a lot of lawnmowers and stuff like that but um always change your filter and your oil um a lot of people will change the oil on something like this and they won't change the filter. They'll skip services, change it every other time. Again, I don't want to buy a new generator. This one was enough, so we're gonna do it just once, have it done with. So I like to make sure everything's new and ready to go, nice and clean. Don't put it in this cap. I'll show you why. I like using new oil for this because if you're going to put new oil in it, you might as well put new oil on the seal. These seals get sticky, so you want to oil those with some new oil. That makes sure that your gasket doesn't stick to your block when you go to take it off. Like I said, I put nice new oil on there so it's all nice and wet. And then that's as easy as just spinning this on there. Clean up to do yeah. Still a little slippery. That's pretty much hand tight, but I'm gonna give it just a little bit because I don't want it to leak. There we go. Just a little bit. Okay, so I've got the oil is all drained, the filter is changed. So now we're gonna put this back on. That's your drain hose. <clears throat> there we go. That's good to go. And a nice clean little red funnel here. I'm going to put that in there. I'm using uh, Napa Synthetic 5W30. Uh, that's what the people from the generator company recommended. That's what they use when they do them themselves. This takes about a quart and a half. 
actually maybe a quart and a third. Well, being as warm as it is, it shouldn't take long for it to run down into the engine. I'm gonna call that full. We'll have to run it and check it again, but for all intents and purposes, it is full. Try to make sure there's no oil puddles so that when I do start it, if the oil's running out of it, I'll see it. I always want to check for leaks. I'm going to let this run up and warm up, and I'm going to check the oil again. So I'm going to start it. You're wondering why I don't use any power tools when I'm working on stuff like this. They work good, they're fast, I'm not gonna say they're not, but it's a fine line, you know, when you're using a little electric impact, uh, as far as whether you're tightening something or you're over tightening it or whether you're gonna strip it. And again, to me a generator is a major expense. I don't wanna screw it up. With an impact, you can, there's really no telling how tight you're getting it because you don't, your hand isn't right on the on the end of the wrench. <laughs>